This is Mitchell Zoller with Cardiology News. I'm at the scientific sessions of the American Heart Association in Philadelphia. I'm talking with Dr. Larry Allen, who's a heart failure physician at the University of Colorado. We're going to be talking about the DAPA-HF study, which looked at the efficacy of dapagliflozin in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And in this analysis presented today, uh, patients with diabetes and those without. So, uh, Dr. Allen, um, what do you think that these new data show about the efficacy of this approach in patients with diabetes and those without diabetes? Uh, well, they're exciting findings, even um, though we heard the top line results at the European Society of Cardiology meetings uh, at the beginning of September that the use of an SGLT2 inhibitor in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction had pretty impressive um, gains in terms of clinical outcomes for patients. But interestingly, uh, this is a diabetes drug that's being used in patients with heart failure. And the investigators designed this trial so about half the patients had diabetes at baseline and half of them did not. And uh, today what we saw in detail is that for those patients um, without diabetes, they had the same benefits as those patients who did have diabetes, um, which I think is very novel. You're taking a drug that was initially designed for one disease, diabetes. Now you see that it has gains in people with diabetes with heart failure. And now when we use it in patients who only have heart failure, we see the same benefits. So that's very novel. And I think that's exciting to see here at the AHA. I know one, um Concern, uh, one interest that people have in these data is that the trial was designed with a combination of both patients with diabetes and not. Um, so how valid, how strong do you think these data are in a subgroup analysis of this study? Um, yeah, I think this is a particularly strong subgroup analysis, and the reason for that is that the investigators, when they designed the trial, they had this question in mind. So they really went out and got a population of more than 4,000 patients, and again, about half of them had diabetes and half of them did not. So rather than a very small subgroup, you're really looking at a large trial that has two large subpopulations. The other is that because this was a central question, when they randomized patients, they stratified that randomization by the presence or absence of diabetes. So I don't think this is kind of a post hoc look at an interesting finding that somebody dredged up. This is um, a hypothesis that the investigators put out from the beginning. And I think that these are very strong uh, findings and, ha and the statistical significance of the benefits in terms of the outcomes. Um, even in the subgroup of non-diabetics, um, is is uh, is very strong. Um, so there's been a lot of data coming out now about not only dapagliflozin but other drugs in the same class, the SG2, SGT2L inhibitors. Um, and so, what do you see as the total? Um, package of data showing in terms of efficacy in patients and heart failure. How important an additional drug is this? You were talking earlier today about how there already are several foundation drugs for patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Where does this now fit in? Um, yeah, so I think there's the question of how does this fit in for in the diabetes uh, medications, and then how does this fit in for the patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction? Um, you know, these drugs, so empagliflozin, uh, canagliflozin, as well as dapagliflozin, um, these are the SGLT2 inhibitors. This class of drugs now has been studied in tens of thousands of patients with diabetes, um, and consistently across the EMPA-REG outcome study, the CANVAS trial, as well as declare timmy 58 that was announced here at the AHA last year, you see consistent reductions in heart failure hospitalization and heart failure events in diabetics. I think what we're seeing now with DAPA-HF that kind of adds to this is that if you use this in patients who have prevalent existing heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, they also get these large benefits in terms of heart failure events. And as it turns out, that's independent of their diabetes status. So now the question is, when do I use an SGLT2 inhibitor versus a GLP-1 antagonist versus other diabetes drugs? Um, and I think that still needs to be answered. And, you know, now patients with HEFREF, they should be on a beta blocker. They should be on Secubitril Valsartan. They should be on Spironolactone or Plarinone. Um, and when do we add 
one of these SGLT2 inhibitors to that regimen as well. I don't think we know, but it does seem like these drugs are additive and our patients are at high risk. And so if we put these drugs together, we can go from small reductions in clinical events potentially to major redux in, reductions in clinical events for these patients when we use them all, to, all, all at the same time. And one last thing. Um, so um, dapagliflozin is approved for use in the United States, but it's labeled for patients with diabetes. That's right. um, and so do you think that there's the potential for the data that we saw today from DAP AHF by itself leading to a labeling that would include patients without diabetes? So I, I don't work for the FDA, and um, so I don't know what their decision would be. But again, I would argue that um, the data from DAPA-HF and non-diabetics is quite strong. And I think when you look at the data in combination from many studies now, um, it does seem like these benefits um, do carry over to the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction population, irrespective of diabetes. I think that's quite strong. I think there's a good chance that it'll get an indication. And then the question will be, will payers um, be willing to offset the cost for patients um, who have heart failure with reduced ejection fraction but don't have diabetes? And that's a question that needs to play out in the coming months um, in order for people like me to start prescribing this regularly for my patients without diabetes. Thank you, Dr. Allen. And so um, we've heard from these new data from the DAP AHF study that uh, the uh, dapagliflozin and other drugs in the class from the H SGLT2 inhibitor class have a growing role in patients with heart failure. And these data now show potentially those patients with HFREF as well as those without diabetes in that class might be candidates for this drug in the near future. Thank you very much.